we also have another trend to consider, and that is the effect of substituents on the strength of the asset. So I want you to think with me for a minute about electronegativity. Electronegativity is the tendency of an atom to pull electrons towards itself. So if an atom is pulling electrons towards itself, what is happening to the other bonds in the molecule. They are losing electron density. And when a bond loses electron density, it becomes weaker. So, if you look at this, we call this um, inductive electron withdrawal, and that is that an electronegative atom at another position on a molecule will withdraw electrons to itself if it's highly electronegative, and by withdrawing electrons to itself, weaken other bonds and that will cause an acid proton to have a weaker bond and having a weaker bond to an acid proton means that it is a stronger acid. And so in this case the acid with the strongest, the most electronegative atom is going to cause the, the acid proton to be the most acidic. And this only occurs when the electronegative atom is not bonded to the acidic, the electronegative atom considered is not bonded to the acidic proton. and we call that a substituent. If it's not actually bonded to the acidic proton, it is a, a substituent. Not to say that oxygen isn't acidic, but all of these molecules have the exact same characteristics in terms of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. They only differ in the halogen. And so the electronegative atom we're comparing is not bonded to the acid proton. And the more electronegative substituent makes the acid proton have a weaker bond. The more electronegative the substituent, the weaker the bond to the acid proton which is then more acidic or a stronger acid. When you compare them and you will be comparing them. Another substituent effect that we should consider is 
distance. So we can compare the electronegativity of the halide in addition to distance, but it would be much more difficult to compare if we varied what the identity of the halide was. So I do not believe that that occurs on your homework or on the ACS exam, where you have to vary both distance and electronegativity. It will be a variation of one or the other. Okay, so if you think about what we were talking about, the electronegative atom withdrawing electrons towards itself and making the bond to hydrogen weaker, what is going to have a bigger effect? The electronegative atom closer to the acidic proton or the electronegative atom further from the, the acidic proton? How much electron density was withdrawn over one carbon versus two, three, or four carbons away? And the answer is that the closer the electronegative atom is to the acidic proton, the stronger or the weaker the, the weaker the bond to that proton and therefore it the molecule will be a stronger acid. So the closer the electronegative atom is to acid proton, the weaker the bond to acid proton the stronger and the stronger the acidity of the molecule So you should be able to rank acid strength by variation of atoms in electronegativity or by the variation of the distance of the electronegative atom to the acid proton. Why is a carboxylic acid a stronger acid than an alcohol? The atoms are, what's the difference? there is one more electronegative atom in an as a carboxylic acid than there is in an alcohol. And the proximity of that electronegative atom withdrawing electron density makes the bond to hydrogen weaker. <clears throat> We can also use our resonance structures, which you should have learned um, the beginning of resonance structures in Gen Chem 2. Um, no, in Gen Chem 1 with Lewis structures. Um, so with Lewis structures, we can draw resonance structures and that's when you can draw two structures that are identical or have the same basic structure, but just a shift of electrons. And we call those the same. Um, and if we do have the ability of drawing two contributors, like with the acid conjugate bases, of the carboxylic acid, um, if we simply move the negative charge on the first oxygen into a pi bond and the pi bond of the molecule on the left to the oxygen above, that will give us the second resonance contributor. So the idea of having a resonance contributor is that only electrons in pi bonds or lone pairs move.
and those pi bonds and an octet is never exceeded. So if moving electrons would cause exceeding an octet, then you cannot do it. Okay, and you should have also learned about resonance hybrid, and this is the true story of the electron distribution. Instead of having a formally negative charge on one of the oxygens, what actually happens is that essentially there are three electrons in each of the carbon to oxygen bonds. It's like a bond and a half. And the length of the bonds is less than a, a double bond, but more, no, 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 longer is longer than a double bond, but shorter than a single bond. So it's kind of like we know that single bonds are longer than double bonds and double bonds are longer than triple bonds, but this is in between double and single. So it really is um, only explained by considering that it's a three electron bond, kind of. Okay, so summary of factors affecting acid strength. Only comparing a de across a row electronegativity and then only comparing down a group. Never compare across and down at the same time. Then you can say that as you go across a row to the right, acidity increases when that atom is bonded to hydrogen. The bond to hydrogen will be a more acidic bond. And when you go down a group and you compare all of the atoms in group seven to each other, or all of the atoms in group six, or all of the atoms in group five, you can say that when the atoms in a group are bonded to hydrogen, the bond to hydrogen will be more acidic as you move down because size is increasing. We looked at hybridization as well, and we said that when we are comparing a multiple bond carbon to a single bond carbon and its bond to hydrogen, the acidity of the CH bond is increasing as the percentage of S is increasing. So that a triple bond carbon, which is SP hybridized, has a more acidic bond to a proton than a single bond carbon that is sp3 hybridized and has a lower percentage of s. Summary of factor, other summary of factors, continuing. The electronegativity of a halogen atom or an electronegative atom bonded to a molecule that has an acid proton, the electronegative the extra electronegative atom withdraws electrons towards itself and makes the bond weaker. And the more electronegative the atom bonded to the molecule, the weaker the bond to the hydrogen will be and the more acidic it is. So the electronegative atom, more electronegative atom, stronger acid more electronegative substituent. So we'll use our terminology here. Meaning not 
the substituent, remember, is a atom that is not bonded to the part of the molecule that is involved in the reaction. So stronger acid. And then you can also compare, if you're comparing one electronegative atom bonded at different positions on an acid, the closer the electronegative atom is to the acid proton, the stronger the acid. So in the second one, you can say we're comparing proximity of En to acid proton. And the closer, the more acidic. And looking at electron delocalization, the more the electrons can be distributed in the conjugate base, the stronger the acid. So because there is a double bonded oxygen in the conjugate base of a carboxylic acid, when we draw the hybrid structure, the electron density is split across three atoms, which can occur only when you have um, an sp2 or an sp hybridized um, atom, carbon, and that for the alcohol, the electrons cannot be moved because if you were to remove the electrons from oxygen to carbon, you would exceed an octet. So because it's sp3 hybridized, it has an octet. The electrons on the oxygen cannot move. But because the in the acid, the C double bond O is sp2 hybridized, the electrons on the negative oxygen can be moved to that carbon it would not cause it to exceed an octet as long as the pi bond to oxygen moved, which it can, into a lone pair. I'm not going to focus as much on electron delocalization until we get further into this chapter, so don't expect to have a question about this on exam one. Um, we're going to look at the Henderson Hasselbalch equation briefly. I'm not going to give you homework on this problem. You're not going to be doing math in chapter one. I think that we have a math problem in chapter four, and we have some math problems in chapter. 12, and that's it. Okay, so Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, we know that if we have pKa, we can find pH. If we have pH, we can find pKa. And what it requires is conjugate acid-base pairs. And the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation is actually going to be super important in biochem, so don't expect it to go away after having had Gen Chem, it's coming back. Um, the acid form of has of a conjugate acid base pair has one more hydrogen than the basic form. Um, you can write out the dissociation of the acid and the hydrogen from the acid and show the base and the hydrogen and that's what they've done here. Okay, so when we have an equilibrium between acid and base, um, we can know that if the acid form is neutral, the base form will be negative. 
And if the acid form is positive, the base form will be neutral. So a carboxylic acid, for example, is neutral in its acidic form and charged in its basic form. And alcohol is neutral in its acidic form and charged in its basic form. And an amine is charged in its acidic form and neutral in its basic form. And the difference between the charge of a conjugate acid base pair is never more than one. Now, this is my favorite rule, I think, about pH comparing to pKa. And this is something that I will ask on the homework and probably on the exam. So we can take an acid base and we can compare pH and pKa. So if the pH of a solution is equal to the pKa of the solution, then the concentration of the conjugate acid to the conjugate base will be 50-50. And we can show that by plugging in that percentage. So if the acid, if the if it's 50-50 acid base, that means that the concentration of HA is equal to the concentration of H minus. And we are taking the log of one. So that the log of HA over A minus is equal to the log of one. And the log of one is equal to zero. So then if you put that into the equation, pKa would be equal to pH plus zero. So when the concentration of HA and A minus are equal, then pKa is equal to pH. When pH is less than pKa, the solution has more acidity than the acid. So pH is less than pKa because of the excess of protons, then there is um, the acid form is favored. So think of excess pH as being, um, so as pH is less than pKa, concentration of H is greater. So concentration of H plus is greater. Which means that as you add H plus into the reaction, it's going to shift the equilibrium towards the protonated form. Which is the acid. When pH is greater than pKa, the concentration of H plus is lower. And if you remove H plus from the reactions shown above, then the equilibrium should shift towards making more H plus. And that means that the base form is favored. You can also think about this as lower pH, more acid. 
So pH is less than pKa, more acid. Higher pH, more base. pH is greater than pKa, more base. Okay? So you'll have some questions on the homework that are something like, um, if you have acetic acid, which has a pKa of 4.8, and the pH of the solution is 8, what form is favored, the conjugate acid or the conjugate base? So if the pH is 8 and the pKa is 4.8, then the base is more present, base form, favored. So be ready to answer those questions on the homework. That should be somewhere in item 15, 16, 17, or maybe in all of them. I don't quite remember. Okay. Oh, this is a long video. Okay, I must stop.